In this video, we'll be talking about the Frobenius problem, and to understand the Frobenius problem, we first have to understand what Frobenius numbers are. So, the Frobenius number of a set of numbers is the smallest number that we can't form using those numbers. So, let's just use an example to demonstrate. So, let's say we have the numbers 3 and 4. So, we'll use a real-life example. Let's say we have uh, just packs of uh, something, let's say packs of thumbtacks that come in packs of 3 or 4, nothing else. So, is it possible for us to make one thumbtack? It's not. Can we make two? We also can't do that. Can we make three? Definitely, we just get a pack of three. Can we make four? Definitely, we just get a pack of four. Now, can we make five? We cannot make a pack of five. Can we make six? Definitely, we just get two packs of three. Can we make seven? We just get one three and one four. And can we make eight? Sure, we just get two fours. <clears throat> now, we can go on and see what else we can make, but the truth is, when we get three, numbers in a row that we can make. In this problem, we've shown that we can make all numbers, because how do you make um, 9? You simply just take 6 and you add 3 more. How do you make uh, <clears throat> 10? You just take 7 and add 3 more. How do you make 11? You add, take 8 and add 3 more. So basically, when you find 3 numbers in a row, like this, you can just add 3 to any of these numbers to get every other number after them, right? Because 6 added to 3 gives rise to 9, gives rise to 12, uh, gives rise to 15, and so on, and 7 gives rise to 10, to 13, to 16, so on, and 8, <clears throat> to 11, to 14, so on, going to 17, and so on. And in this way, we're going to make every number past it. So we found that the smallest number, uh, sorry, rather the largest number that we can't form is going to be 5. Because past 5, we can form every single number, and so 5 must be the largest number. So that's why we say 5 is going to be, 5 is called the Frobenius number, Frobenius number 4, 3, and 4. We can similarly do it again. Let's use a more simpler case even. Let's choose the numbers, let's say, <clears throat> say 2 and 3. Can we form 1? No. Can we form... 2. Yeah. Can we form 3? Yeah. And in this one, we're done. Because take 2 and take 3, and if we add 2 to this, we get 4, 6, 8, dot, dot, dot. If we take 3 and add 2, we get 5, 7, 9, and so on. And in this way, we form every single number after 1. So 1 is actually the Frobenius number of 2 and 3. That is the statement of the Frobenius problem. In the next video, we'll look at what kind of methods we can use to find the Frobenius number for larger examples so we don't have to list out every single case like this one.